Hey everyone, welcome back to another Adobe XD tutorial. Today we're going to check out these cool slider animations that I've created in Adobe XD and uh, they are really smooth and nice. And of course I'm playing with neon colors and dark background and also with drag animations you can do these cool uh, gradient animations as well which I've created here. This looks super duper Cool. Let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite animation. Is it the first one or is it the second drag animation? Let me know in the comments below right now. So for the first design, I'm just going to create a basic square artboard, uh, which can be of any size. It doesn't really matter. Here inside here, what I'll do is first of all, make this a dark charcoal gray uh, and make sure that this dot is set to this blue color. And bring it in the center here so that you get like a blue uh, bluish gray hue in the middle now the next thing that we need to do is create a dial which will be on top of our our glowing element so the dial will be a basic circle i'll remove the border i will go to fill and in under solid color i will click on linear gradient and one side i will copy from this dark background in the background um, in one side, I'll click on it and I'll copy the same color from here, but I'll make sure that this is a slightly lighter version of that color. Just shift to adjust. Now that we have something like this, I'll just rotate it a little bit so that I get it to the right like this. Perfect. Now with the dial created, I will create another ellipse or circle in the background make sure it's a little bigger than the one that we previously created for the dial place it in the center of the artboard and a quick shortcut to place it at the back is command shift square bracket left now it's behind this dial of sorts here what i'll do is i'll select the white circle remove the border from it and give it a certain gradient that I've already saved. I'll be providing the XD file in the description so that you guys can download it and try this out for yourself. Uh, this is the gradient that I've saved in the file. I'll click on this and as you can see, it's automatically applied this gradient. Now it still doesn't look very neon to me. So for that, what I'll do is click on shadow. I won't change the Y axis of the shadow a lot but the b value or the blur value i will change something like 80 or maybe even more 150. It, right now it is a black color we want to give it this pink color in the background so as you can see now this is looking a little more neon i'll reduce the opacity of the shadow from 100 to about 80. Now this is already looking very good. Now I will just copy these circles and I will reduce the opacity of each consecutive circle just by 20% and increase the size of the circle a little bit as well. And I will place it in the center like so. I'll select the one at the back and I'll remove the shadow from the basic one here. And I will keep doing this for four to five circles depends on what kind of design you are creating and i'll make sure that each one is behind the other even if you go to the assets panel on the bottom left here you can see the ellipse 18 should be behind all the other ellipses and reduce the opacity by 20 percent as well now that i've placed four to five circles what i will do is also now make the dial on top to make the dial, I'll first of all create a basic rectangle here, which is really, really thin. I will change the border radius from here from zero to a hundred. So this, this means that the border radius is completely circled out. I will remove the border from this rectangle and I will give it a gray color just like this, but I'll make sure this is a slightly darker version of it. Perfect. Looks real good now. Now I will make the various points on the dial. I can either make it circles or rectangles. For this example, I'm just going to create them with circles since it's simpler to create it with circles. So I, what I'll do is I'll just randomly place uh, a bunch of circles. I don't really need to worry about their placement because I'll show you a quick trick how you can place a couple of circles. Now what I'll do is I'll select all of these circles. Let me select all of them 
And once I've selected all of these, I'll go to the plugins panel at the bottom left here. And I have a plugin installed called Arranger for XD. If I click on Arranger, I will get a menu such as this. And what I can do is while circle is selected, I will change the width to about 200 and height to about 200 as well. As you can see, it automatically arranges these circles in a certain pattern here, in a circular pattern. And I can change the width from 200 to say 400, depending on how big my circle radius or my circle diameter is. So in this case, I feel 300 by 300 should be fine for the size of circle I've chosen. You can just adjust it according to your values and you know change it up a little bit. So I'll just place this in the center of this circle. Once it's in the center, I, I'll exit the plugin, come back to my, I'll come back to my layers panel here. And as you can see, this is now a group. So to ungroup this, I'll just press Command Shift G or Control Shift G on my keyboard. And now, as you can see, there are multiple ellipses right here. Now, I'll just memorize that these circles are from 28 to 21 and that is how we will work with them. So while everything is selected, I'll just remove the border of these circles and I'll give it the same light pink color that we've given here and also give each of them a slight shadow as well so that they seem neon as well. So I'll just choose the pink color that we have and maybe bring it down to 70%. And now as you can see, it seems neon as well. I'll remove the Y value here, I'll make it zero so that it looks a little more flat as well. And I'll make sure that this is behind this rectangle dial that we have created. So I'll unselect everything and I'll make sure that this rectangle is at the center. Now what I will do is I will copy this circle, which is this gray circle. I will put it right above this old gray circle and make sure that this new circle is at the top just say command or control right square bracket and it will bring it to the top right here and while this big circle on top is selected i will select all the small dial circles that i had created the pink ones um, and as you can see it is highlighting it on screen so you don't have to worry about anything else and while everything here is selected i'll say command shift m or control shift M on my keyboard to mask these. Now that we have a mask, what I'll do is basically, I will move these circles one by one out of this mask. So as soon as the, it starts going out of this mask, uh, it'll start disappearing. So while, so I I'll make sure that the first circle in this group is right outside, far away. The second circle is even further away, but at a similar angle to what? So I'll make sure that the first circles are the furthest away. So they can be, and make sure just out of sheer, sheer visualization that they are in the same angle as they were placed in. So the second circle here will be slightly towards the outside, but not as far as the previous circle. This should be good enough. Uh, for the third circle as well, it should be closer to this, this circle just by a little bit. And so on and so forth, we'll just keep on shifting these circles, uh, but they should be closer to the external circle here. Just take that for reference. And as you can see, they're coming closer and closer. And the last one is really close to this circle. You can do the opposite as well. But for right now, I will do like a reverse trigger. So I'll make sure that the volume goes down rather than going up. Now everything is set up here. I will duplicate this artboard, select the artboard and say Command D or Control D. And here, what I'll do is one last step in this animation is to select the rectangle here, which is the dial and the circle on top. Once both of these are selected, press Command Shift G or Control Shift G on Windows, press Command G or Control G on Windows to group these two items together. Now, I will click on the name of the artboard and say Command D or Control D 
and this will duplicate the artboard for me. The next step is to actually rotate this. In this case, I'm just going anti-clockwise until it reaches a certain point, say minus 330 degrees, as you can see here. Now, if we go in this mask group, we can see all these circles that we had placed uh, initially in a sequence. Now we will start to place them back inside this circle to where they actually belong. And I will start placing them just like this and bring them closer as well. Just make sure they're placed in a neat circle as such. Now that these circles are placed neatly inside this circle, I will also start scaling down uh, the inner circles here. So the outermost circle, which was the least opacity, will be the smallest and I'll place it in the center of this artboard and the second outermost circle will be slightly bigger in size when I scale it down and I'll again place it somewhere in the center of this and I'll keep on doing this but each circle will be slightly bigger than the previous one. I'm doing this so that there can be a slightly delayed animation that can happen with each of these circles. Now I'll place a rectangle on the right edge of this circle. Well, circles don't have an edge, but you get what I mean. If I place this rectangle here, I will reduce the opacity of this rectangle and I'll say Command C or Control C to copy it. Come to this artboard and in this artboard, I'll shift this invisible rectangle to the left side of this circle. Now we have our drag trigger ready. I will go into prototype mode. I'll click on this re invisible rectangle. I'll bring this arrow to the second artboard here. And rather than saying tap on the trigger, I'll change it to drag. And auto animate should be on. And easing, we will change from none to ease out. Now, if I select the first artboard, go to play, and I drag this rectangle from the right to the left, Oh, see how these circles come in as well? These look so cool and so neat. I love this animation myself. Now the second animation is gonna be super easy to create. All we do is first of all, create a line by, I can select, I can create a line by going to this line tool on the left here. And what I'll do is make sure that the size is about four. So it's visible, of course. And I will give it the same color as this pink at the top here. And if I zoom in, I will change the color from the pink. I will move this circle on the right from the pink color to this bluish green color that we have here. Now this looks neon and this looks very, very good. Now comes the simple part, creating the levels. I will create a rectangle, a basic rectangle right here. I will remove the border from it, of course, and I will go to this repeat grade button here while this rectangle is selected, press on it, and these green handles have appeared. This means that repeat grade is active. If I drag this green handle, it'll repeat the rectangles in a series. These rectangles I will place here. I will copy this over, and I will create, I will add two more rectangles to this in a series, of course, and I'll place it right next to each other and I'll give a good gap as well. Now I'll keep on adding two to each and once I'm done with this, I will skip to the next part. As you can see, I've placed all of these together. What I will now do is go ahead, select all of these and say Command Shift G to ungroup all of these. So as you can see, I have all these rectangles placed in a series and they're named the same, but that doesn't really matter here. And what I will do is I will select each of these series individually, go to the top right here, and there's this add icon right here. I'll click on this add icon and that will make this a proper union. And I want to do this for all these rectangles right here. Hope you have been following along. I've, been, I've created all different unions right here, which have all a different name. Now what I shall do is create a small circle right here. It shouldn't be too big, probably smaller than the width of these rectangles. 
And what I'll do is remove the border from these ellipses and I'll say Command X or Control X to cut the first ellipse. Select the first union, double click inside it and as you can see the union has opened right up and while any one of these rectangles is selected, I'll say Command V or Control V to copy that circle inside this union. Now I will, and both sides should be the same greenish blue, turquoise blue color that I've chosen for this. The top end of this gradient, which is this one circle here, should be 0% in opacity. Now that looks good. And I will also adjust this to look uh, less opaque on the top right here. And that's about it. I will copy this circle into each union right here. And as you can see, each circle will then turn white, but I will apply the gradient that I've already saved just like this right here and also shift, shift each of these circles a little to the bottom. So the first circle is the closest, second is slightly further and so on and so forth. Now everything looks good and in a series, each union has a slightly lighter gradient because I've placed each circle further away from one another. Now these circles are a little annoying here, so to remove them, I will create a rectangle right over these smaller rectangles or unions. Make sure it only fits the unions here. And I will select everything right here. As you can see, the rectangles or unions at the back have been selected along with the white rectangle on top. And I'll say Command Shift M or Control Shift M, which is the shortcut to mask all of these. Now this looks good, the circles have gone, but they still do exist. Now what I'll do is I'll create either a circle or some form of rectangle as a handle for this right here. I'll make this the same color as this turquoise and I'll make this a solid color of course. Now the handle is ready. What we will do is I will duplicate this artboard right here. In the second artboard, each of these circles will now move towards the top of the mask. So that the circles at the end of the day aren't appearing on the artboard and try to keep the circles in the center of these levels as well. So I've just covered a few of these levels here. What I'll do is I'll shift this circle from the left to maybe this level right here, maybe the center of this, so that we get the feel of increase in volume. And I'll go to prototype now. I'll click on this little circle. I'll move this arrow to the second artboard while drag is selected on the trigger, auto animate on the action, artboard 4, which is this artboard right here as the destination, and ease out as the easing. I will now play this artboard and see how the preview works. So if I drag this circle, ooh, see how these circles are floating on top and they're increasing the levels of the volume, so as to say as well. This looks really neat and really nice. I hope you liked this tutorial. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon because I have a lot of good stuff coming in the year 2020. I hope you like this video. I'll see you every Monday and Thursday. God bless you guys.